This is a HeadGum Podcast. Folks, it's time to get Quip. Me and Joe do it. It makes toothbrushing easy. Brushing your teeth, just like making love. The kind of thing you don't really know if you're doing it right till you start doing it right. And folks, Quip is brushing done right. It's the new electric toothbrush that packs just the right amount of vibrations into a slimmer design at a fraction of the cost of bulkier traditional electric brushes. It has guiding pulses that alert you when to switch sides, making brushing just the right amount of effortless. It's true. You really don't have to think about it. It lets you know when to move on to another quadrant of your mouth. Quip also comes with a mount that suctions right to your mirror and unsticks to use as a cover for hygienic travel anywhere, whether it's going in your gym bag or your carry-on. And because the thing that cleans your mouth should also be clean, Quip subscription plan or subscription plan, surprised they didn't think of that, I'll, I'll have to let them know, refreshes your brush on a dentist-recommended schedule. They deliver new brush heads every three months for just five bucks, including free shipping worldwide. Quip's backed by a network of over 10,000 dental professionals, including dentists, hygienists, and dental students. Most toothbrushes don't get named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of the year, but Quip did. It's time to find out for yourself why. Quip starts at just 25 bucks, and if you go to getquip.com slash see you right now, you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash see you. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash see you. Folks, it's going to be love at first brush. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's another delicious, delectable, nutritious, devious, uh, 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 bootylicious. De- yeah, episode of We'll See You in Hell. Pat, why don't you kick us off here? Sure, I will. Um, I guess we'll just jump right into it and get on with the show. And while we're doing so, on with the Joe. On with the Joe. If you think you're going to leave, then you better say so. <laughs> what is that song? Tom Petty. R.I.P. Tom Petty. I need to know. Oh, yeah, you're right. He played it when we saw him at the Hollywood Bowl days before his untimely death. Three which days. I have not been doing well with. Like, it's affected me more than maybe any celebrity death in my life since, like, the John Candy, Chris Farley days. I'm to be honest. It's affected me more than deaths in my own family. Yeah, I mean, especially having that really magical night at the Bowl uh, where he not only sounded incredible and played like 90 hits, <laughs> yeah, but he seemed very healthy and looked, I mean, look, the man was never attractive. He looks like a possum, but <laughs> he, he was, you know, he looked like he always looked and he, he seemed very stoned. He seemed he seemed to be the most stoned man of all time, but I, right. but I love that because I was at the... Uh, I was at our favorite local bar, The Roost, the other night, mm-hmm. uh, and I said... Another uh, sponsor of the show. Not. Nah, just we love the place. I was talking to the bartender, telling her about the shows before he died. Yeah. And she's like, oh, how was it? And I go, he was so high, but it was awesome. I was like, he's just clearly from a different time. I'm like, I wish I could be like that. He's just up there like, hey, everybody, all right, man. Right. You know, and I'm like... I just am not wired that way. Like yeah. everything is stress and panic, and <laughs> he's just a child of the of the sixties or or the fifty. I don't know. Fuck. How I th- I think that is what he was sixty six, which is older than I thought he was. But that's what uh, kind of affects it so much that he seems you know stress is a killer, as they say. So you imagine these people who are super stressed out as the ones who die young. I and mean, he seemed really chill. The he only did have a heroin issue late in life. He did obviously do a lot of cocaine, but it was the seventies. Well, that's that's the only peace of mind I can you know get out of this is that is that I I don't hope anything. I just I I would I would like to think that there was a reason 
you hate to think a guy like this just dies for no reason. You know, maybe it was hard partying or something and it caught up with him yeah. years later or something, or maybe he had a heart issue. I don't, I don't know. But just the, what's the saddest to me is the idea that Tom Petty just died for no reason. Other yeah. than his heart was like, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. So I am. I, I had seen him at a festival in Pasadena and it was a, I'd seen him many times in my life, but it was a real miserable experience because we wound up like pushed against a fence with a security guard shining a light in our faces the entire time. And when my buddy asked me to go see him at the bowl, I was like, you know, it's they were, they were expensive seats. I kind of went debate. I was like, I just saw him, but I couldn't be more glad that I went because I would have hated to have that other one be the last night. I almost didn't go. Yeah. I would have been kicking myself. Yeah. I almost didn't go because I was like, I don't know, man. It's kind of a busy week and shit. Uh, man, I don't know. Maybe next time I'll catch him or whatever. Like, I almost didn't fucking go. And um, you got to go. And once I was there, Good I was things. so happy I was there. As soon as he started playing, I was like, I can't believe I even considered missing this. And then he died like three days later. So, I mean, Jesus Christ. He died the day after, I think, right? The final yeah. night of this tour of his 40th anniversary tour. Yeah, That's it makes crazy. you wonder if he, I mean, obviously he didn't kill himself, but it makes you wonder if he wasn't kind of like, had maybe gotten a little troubling health news and decided to go out for one last, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and, you know, while we're talking about people taking from us too soon, uh, Ralphie May, buddy, uh, very, very sad about your passing and uh, the whole comedy community is. And, uh, just very, very fucking sad, man. Ralphie was a great dude, a uh, hilarious comic, fucking just just a golden soul on that guy. Just a nice, supportive, great dude. Uh, and I'm really, really sad that he, uh, that he has passed. Um, and his, again, it was another thing. He did a show on Thursday night at Harris in Vegas, and he was dead Friday. Yeah. He, like, it was like business as usual. Yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. I never met the man. He's very funny, obviously. Great dude. Really great dude. I mean, th there it's a little less of a, of a shock, but still, I mean, he was a young man. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Obviously he unhealthy, but. Not in great health, obviously, uh, or in, at least not in great physical condition. Right. I can't speak to what his health right. was. But, um, you know, I, I think I, I heard that he had been battling pneumonia or something. And okay. I think. Sadly, when you're when you're at that kind of weight, something like pneumonia is really gonna yeah is really gonna potentially trigger some other much more uh, crucial stuff, you know, or vital stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just a bummer, man. I, he was a friend, and you know, he was the kind of guy like when I would post tweets about like you know, fuck you, American Airlines, you know, uh -huh. those flights to he's like the guy that would retweet you. Uh -huh. Because he had significantly more followers, and then be like American Airlines, you know who you fucking with? That's Joe DeRosa <laughs> right there, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure that because he did that, it led to me getting several A free beverage vo vouchers from American Airlines yeah. for free flights. Uh, but he, he was just a good dude, man. He was just a really, really good dude. Uh, I don't doubt it. Anyway, rest in peace to both of you, Tom and Ralphie, and. Uh, and that brings us to Pat's movie. <laughs> hey, thanks for that great, great warm up. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to get the audience hot. Sure. Before we go into your segment. Uh, I've seen a couple items. I, I watched the HBO Spielberg documentary. I hear it's great. It's fantastic. It's it's two and a half hours. I could have gone for another two and a half. Um, because they left out a, a lot of movies. I mean, so, some with good reason and some without. But, uh, Joe, can you turn that iTunes thing off? I have OCD about it. The it, what? It's, it's a problem of mine. The, the icon keeps bouncing down at the bottom. The iTunes icon is bouncing. It's Of course, it stopped the second I commented on it. Doesn't look like anything <laughs> bouncing Are you me. gaslighting me right now? I don't see anything bouncing. It was Pat. bouncing. All right. All right. I don't it, even see a damn iTunes icon no, down you, there. It's you see, you see the icon. I know. I'm kidding. I'm not even you can't. At a well, no, you can't. You can't cover it. All right. Fine. It's in the toolbar. I guess it'll just keep doing it, but that's fine. Um, yeah, the Spielberg documentary. So they they didn't mention several movies, but I was kind of. They also start with Jaws, then go to the beginning. It kind of jumps around in a very weird way. Sure. But it was fascinating, especially how much uh, 
daddy issues the man has. And they really, really go into it. Because when they start showing back to back to back all these movies where he deals with daddy issues, I mean, Last Crusade and even like frivolous stuff. Even Close Encounters. Close Encounters. That's, and it, that's probably the biggest one. Yeah. Uh, E.T., uh, all this stuff, missing fathers, absent fathers, catch me if you can. Uh, War of the Worlds was about like they're they're all yeah. about that. Yeah, and uh, then you learn the story. Of Schindler's his, List. <laughs> yes, right. You learn about his parents, and uh, that that stuff was all very interesting to me. And the one thing I did have a problem with was they'd show these clip packages, and it would be like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, like I, these iconic scenes, Poltergeist, E.T. Jurassic Park, Schindler's List, War Horse. <laughs> War so, Horse won Oscars. It, what, for sound or something? No, no, that was a big movie, man. Maybe nominated for shit. But they when made you, it into a fucking... Oh, no, it was a play it was first. play first. When you see yeah. that stupid War Horse galloping around, you're like, don't start pretending that that's up in this cow. Then they shit on the color purple, which is... They shit on I it. I think it's a beautiful movie. Everybody does. Why do they shit on it? Um, the only mention that it gets is... Wait, they shit on it or they don't... They shit it? on it. And it was that was nominated for 12 Oscars. So basically, uh, it starts out with this... They, they talk to a couple critics throughout. And this guy's like, I mean, maybe you don't treat this topic where every shot looks so beautiful. Like, this was him at his absolute worst. This isn't a documentary about Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Then uh, Why Spielberg is himself because... is like everyone was upset, which I did, of course I didn't know about this controversy. I was four years old, but the book had a heavy lesbian plot, and in the movie they do Whoopi Goldberg does kiss that woman pretty passionately, and then they go away from it. It's a PG thirteen movie, right? And things weren't handled that explicitly back then, uh, and people were apparently furious with Steven Spielberg, and he discusses this in the documentary. Uh, there's a scene in the book where she makes Whoopi Goldberg look at her vagina in a mirror. Like, look at it. That's your special, th you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, Spielberg was like, sorry, uh, I did not feel I was the right man to include that moment. Uh, <laughs> made me uncomfortable. I thought it was weird. But that's really all they say about the color purple. Like, he didn't have the guts to show you Whoopi Goldberg's vag. So suddenly right. it's a bad movie? Like, right. D does, it, does it show, like as graphically as Schindler's List does, you know, what that girl went through? No, but right. not every movie has to be that explicit. What it reminded right. me of, there's, there's 30 minutes in it, basically, of, of Schindler's List. And I think that's an all-time top 10 for me. Uh, it's, it's a classic film. I mean, it's, you know, it's a beautiful movie. They're both beautiful films. Both of those films are beautiful films. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, I'm going to say it. Steven Spielberg's a, a talented director. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. No, I'm kidding. What, uh, what no mention of the see? terminal. Yeah, they just glaze yeah. over the terminal. Four or five uh, shots from the BFG made the cut. He directed that? Yeah. He did? I didn't see BFG. But I also, didn't... They, like Hook. I think Hook's pretty lame. Yeah. But like, people really fucking love that movie, and it made <sighs> a tremendous amount of money. You see one shot of Hook, like flash by. That's I'm happy to hear that. I think Hook is a is a fucking schmaltz. It's fest. a bad movie. It's a uh, bad movie. But people, especially people my age, love it. My age. What I mean, else I'm have not you seen? Younger than you, but you know what I mean. All, all my people my age. No people my age. Love it. Yeah. What uh? What else? Um, I watched. Oh, wait, I'll do one, then you do another. Great. Right. Uh, I tried to watch the Bad Batch. Uh, heard things it's supposed is was it nc17 or something i don't even know it was it was on netflix i put it on i think i made it about 30 minutes before i started fast forwarding and i was just like you know it's another one of these movies and it's 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 the same problem i have with the drive guy uh you know with some of his work uh or the later work oh Refn. i thought you were talking about a movie called the drive guy no 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 this the director it's the problems I have with everything he's been doing since Bronson. Um, and it's the same thing. This I forget the lady's name, but she directed A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, I think it was called. Yeah, Iranian director. Yeah, she's very talented, obviously. But it's this, it's this, it's this crew of directors that's like, it's, it's, it's just a, mu it's a music video. It's a big fucking music video. It's a lot of scenic shots. It's a lot of landscapes. There's no dialogue. 
It's very slow. It's like it's not enough. The picture quality is not enough for me. Right. Uh, I found it extremely boring. Uh, and then also Jim Carrey with his like recent horse shit where in every interview he's like, there is no Jim Carrey. There is only the world's impression of Jim Carrey. None of us are here. None of this is real. It's like, well, really, Jim? Then then go live in a cabin and stop producing things and making movies and making... Z nice that you figured this out as you make millions of dollars. What, how does this tie into the Bad Batch? He's got a cameo. Well, oh, he's okay. got a small part in it. I just and thought it's just, you, had, you had snapped for a minute. No, just the sight of him in it annoyed me. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I, mean, I like Jason Moma. I th you know, he's, he's fine in it. You know, it's like, it's just not... The, the main girl, I can't remember her name because I didn't know who she was before I saw this, but uh, she was good. Like, it's, it's like nobody's bad in it. It's, or anything. it's just an interest me. It's just a, it's just fucking boring. It's like, I don't yeah. care about this. I just don't care. Like, depravity in the wasteland is not enough to make a movie interesting. It's not enough for me. Like, they cut her arm off in the first five minutes and then, and then her leg in the first seven minutes. It's like, I don't fucking care. Like, it's right. not enough. That's not a story to me. So... Uh, and I didn't really see, I didn't really find it to be, you know, a movie like THX 1132, whatever the fuck it's called, the George Lucas Never seen it. first movie. Uh, it's stark and it's slow, but there's an interesting social commentary to it. It's about consumerism in the seventies and, and materialism and all these things. And I didn't see that commentary in this film. If I missed it, let me know. I mm -hmm. apologize, but I didn't see the commentary. So I just thought it was just kind of a much, 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 much more boring version of like a Mad Max movie. Okay. It's like you better throw some goddamn flaming car chases into this thing with a guy playing electric guitar. Sure. Or that's my note on every movie. I see, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's my uh, that's the first one for me. Okay. Uh, I watched this morning a movie I hadn't seen in 15 years. I saw it at the theater in Missouri called Orange County. Yes. Colin Hanks, who is an acquaintance of mine, a nice man. I like that uh, Colin Hanks. Very yeah. nice man. Good face. Yes. Nice guy face. Yes. Who plays the mom in Orange County? Catherine O'Hara. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Jack Black. Yeah. Jack Black's real funny in it. It's a good cast. Harold Ramis. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's great. Great cast. Fu it, you know, never like screamingly funny, but just like a very likable, funny comedy with a good soundtrack and the, and the kind of film dare i say they don't make much anymore it's likable and enjoyable in the way that like stripes is mm -hmm. i never found stripes like gut busting funny but it's a very enjoyable film and it, it yes. makes you laugh it does um all right uh i'm three episodes deep because all they've released are three episodes of uh the the season four of gotham I got to tell you, folks, this show has found its footing. It is fucking really? awesome. Took about a season and a half for them to kind of figure it out. First season, second season, there were there was a lot of bumpiness. It was kind of like, well, wait, why are they doing it that way? And what is this? Whatever. Third season, they came out swinging and kind of they, they figured it out. They were like, OK, we know what you guys want. You guys want the villains to be the villains and you want Bruce Wayne to become Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne at like 16 years old and this thing is already going out in like a suit, not the bat suit, but a version of it. He's not Batman yet and fighting crime in the shadows. Who's Batman, the kid from the OC. I don't know what else he was ever in. This is the first thing I ever saw. Him in. Maybe he's Commissioner Gordon. I uh, I think the yeah, is it the like kid, a sexy Commissioner Gordon. He's like rugged. He's, okay. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say Does he look like a young Russell Crowe. Yes. That's the guy from the OC. Uh, he's great. Um, Donald Loge is great as a uh, Harvey Bullock. Um, you find his kid, Donald Loge. Oh Jesus, I don't know. Didn't hear how that ended. I hope it's all right. I hope so. It's terrible. Yeah, I forgot about. I meant that. I hope the situation is all right. Yeah. Um, you know, Penguin. I can't remember any of the actors' names, but Penguin is fucking awesome. Riddler. They got Scarecrow in it now. Uh, last late last season, they brought in like the beginning of the Joker and they're doing like the detective comics fucking dial maker Joker where he has his face cut off and then he has it reattached like is, it's fucking awesome. Is Jada Pinkett Catwoman? She's dead. 
She oh. was she was a character they made up named Fish Mooney, which she was she was great in it. But I think um, that was one of the things that was confusing in the beginning. It's like, why are you making up a new character? Like, right. have her play somebody from the comics. Right. Uh, no, a young, very young girl is Catwoman. Who just got excited about that name, Fish Mooney? Yeah, it's a great name. Yeah. Uh, but they they've just brought in every young girl. I can't remember her name. She's Catwoman. She's great. She's she's pretty much in full swing now as Catwoman. Uh, Rachel Ghoul is is entered the picture. It's fucking awesome. It right. moves like a fucking detective comics. It's dark. It's it's great. It's great. I'm very very happy and. Uh, now, speaking of uh, Batman, I, I didn't get a response last night on my text about the Justice League trailer. I didn't quite understand why you were so wound up about this one stupid joke in the thing. Well, you always complain about stupid jokes being in these movies, but I thought it was a stupid joke and a, and a harmful joke, and it pissed me off. And I was sitting and watching this trash preview. Oh, stop it. I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to see this. I had made up my mind. And then at the end, some guys in the in the uh, Batmobile or whatever with Batman, Bruce Wayne, and they go, "So what's your superpower?" And he goes, "I'm rich." He That's doesn't the last say it line like of the that, trailer. First of all, he does. He says it's smugly. He, he this is why that's in kids the, like Batman. So th- then it's like, oh, this is why that's if in I want to be trailer. like Batman, I got to accumulate wealth, and then we're going to wind up with a bunch of republicans again this is why that's that's not what's going to happen i think you're drawing really jumping to hard it, it, conclusions it hit me here. in a bad place i'm sick of those movies a and b batman gloating about being rich not my he's batman. not gloating not my batman listen it was never about gloating for my it's, Batman. he might sit you down at a long table in there you might you might not be able to hear him down the table while you're oh, trying to eat dinner Jesus Christ. but he wasn't show off you yeah. about it so i always wonder why he didn't really? bring basinger's chair over you, you didn't think it was you didn't think it was weird when he goes give this guy Grant Alfred that uh, fucking you know G- I've never been in this room before none oh, of that stuff none give, of that bothered give me. this guy a grand sounds yeah. like charity to me is what it sounds like it was Robert Wool's reporter character yeah. who was a snooping sleaze well hopefully he paid him <laughs> to not appear in any future Batman movies because it's hard to look at him Listen, I hate that guy the reason that joke is in the trailer is because that is a running Batman joke that has never been addressed. And that's them nodding to the fans like, we're finally going to put the thing in where somebody's like, what do you do? And he's just like, oh, I just have a lot of money and I can buy these things. Pete has a joke about it. Give me a lunatic with a billion dollars. That's a superhero. Like, it's a joke. It's like a common joke amongst Batman fans. So it's like that that's in there as a nod to the fans. That is not them being like, isn't it cool that he's rich? But how's the kid going to differentiate it? Jesus fucking Christ. How are the children going to You're right. And the kids shouldn't have been allowed to watch Beavis and Butthead. It was their fault. You know, it's it's the parent. It's your parent. What are we going to And then we got to watch what kids think in a goddamn movie? I just know my Batman was a lot cooler and a lot nicer. I'm going to say this, Walsh. Well, you don't get to have a Batman with all the <laughs> foul shit you've been saying around this podcast about him lately. You don't get well, a Batman. Well, my Batman is, is Mike Keaton. Well... I, I I hate to break it to you. My Joker is a Jackie Nix. You're insane. You're insane. There are better Jokers than Jackie. My Penguin Nicks. is uh, Danny DeVito. <laughs> That's nuts. Oswald Cobblepot. The only Penguin is so far in film is uh, Burgess Meredith. So far in film, right. the TV show Penguin is. No, they they should have had him do the Burton movie. Burgess is a Meredith, second a- age one hundred and nine. That Danny DeVito is a great actor, and he's great in that part. He's that is not the that. Penguin. That is not the character. You've the, seen a better. Uh, well, see, I never. You know, I never care about that. The Penguin I is care not about a, what's entertaining. You to do me. care about it because we talked about it with it. The Penguin is not a mutant that lives in a sewer. <laughs> with, with it's crazy. And How then about the, Pfeiffer? Pfeiffer was great. So DeVito was great. I just didn't like what the direction they took the character in. Nicholson was a great Joker, but as oh, any I'm, Batman fan will tell you, Schwarzenegger was a great free. Oh God! Uh, the best Joker is Mark Hamill's uh, Joker on the Batman animated series, sure. and the second best is Heath Ledger. I have a terrible life connotation to Batman the animated series, so I hate it. I used to love it. I stopped watching it. I just picked up. You know how much we like that Americana at the Glendale Galleria. Sure. I went over to that the Armenian Barnes, Grove. Yeah, the Barnes and Noble that we love so much over there. Shop for DVDs the other day. Got seasons two and four of the Batman animated series. Ten bucks each. Nice. Also got 
a copy of The Witches, which is a really fun. Angelica Houston? Yeah, so I saw Great that movie. for the first time. Great movie. Six ninety nine. Also walked out of there uh, with a copy of the Blu-ray of Legend starring Tom Cruise. You know, I have the Blu-ray of Legend, and I have never seen the movie. Director's cut, much better than the original oh, cut. Oh, good. All but right. both are good. Um, I went uh, one night. They had a, a night in the cemetery. I don't do this anymore, but you go... Everyone always has like eight bottles of wine for three people. Mm -hmm. uh, weeds always being passed around. And I was so excited to go. It was Labyrinth starting at 10 oh, p.m. Wow. All right. Legend at midnight and like the Princess Bride at two. And I was like, what a great night it's going to be. And I'm out, I have a pillow and a blanket, whatever. Wine starts flowing. The joint starts flowing. I'm asleep before David Bowie's bulge enters the picture. <laughs> I mean, I saw maybe 10 minutes of puppets in Labyrinth, and I was out. Uh, Actually, if I, it was my first time seeing Labyrinth, I would have thought, oh, this is a movie about Jennifer Connelly babysitting. Yes. I wouldn't yeah. have known about the Labyrinth aspect of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that wraps up me for the movie corner. You got anything else? No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, let me do a quick scary stuff. Okay. I got, oh, no. My, you know what I should have done was save Spielberg for scary stuff. God damn it. It doesn't make sense for scary stuff. It does. It's a thing about... He makes horror movies. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Worse. I really thought I, I had I, this I one. I don't understand. Again. But he makes scary movies. It doesn't... That's not what this is about. Uh, scary <laughs> stuff is about a product that is horror related that you can purchase. You can purchase a, uh, Spielberg on, on iTunes. So... But you're not... There's no physical... So, there's no physical product to review. So yeah, how do you, there is a physical product? It's a documentary called Spielberg, and I'm reviewing it. You can't. Here's what would make it a scary so, stuff. Do you want to stop? Do you want to listen and try to learn how to fucking do this for once? Here's what would make it a scary stuff. If you said so, Criterion finally released the Spielberg documentary on Blu-ray. Yes, it's beautiful packaging. It's got all these bonus features. Uh, Go out and get it. All right. Watch how you do it. Ready, folks? Universal Monsters: The Essential Collection. Blu-ray. I've, I've got it, but with a with a different cover. I've had it for years. Uh, the Blu-ray set. If you don't have this, go out and grab it. You can get it on Amazon for a reasonable price. It's not cheap, but it's probably around seventy-five bucks or something. You can get it cheaper. Did yeah. Yours come with the uh, 3D glasses to no. watch Creature from the Black Lagoon. No, mine is 2D. Oh. So oh. you can get this thing on Amazon. It's very great. Uh, I suggest you go buy it for your Halloween viewing pleasure. Uh, it's all eight of the uh, original Universal monsters. So you've got the Mummy, the Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Invisible Man, Dracula, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein. Does it have Blackula? And uh, Phantom of the Opera. No, because he's not one of the original Universal monsters. Uh, but these restorations are Says you. stunning. They are Does it stunning. have Jacula? The uh, vampire who jacks well, off I'm on not, his victims. I'm not in the mood. I got to be honest with you. I'm, t I'm tired. <laughs> oh, I just want to get to the damn movie review. We we're supposed to have a, a spirited debate. It's <laughs> Did, uh, does it have the Scott Bakula? Maybe this is why you don't know how to do the segment because you're always busy horsing off. Well, whenever you get going on Zelda or whatever the fuck, I tune out. I don't have any. I didn't say in Zelda. It. I'm talking about the movie box. Go you, buy this. Usually, at this point, you're talking about Zelda. The version I got came with a bunch of uh, postcards for each movie. Very cool. Very All cool right. set. So go buy that. Notice how I'm not reviewing the movies themselves. I'm just saying this is a great set. Go buy it. Do you see? Do you do. see now? I do. All right. There Unfortunately, you go. I didn't buy anything spooky this week. Well, that's fine. You don't have to do it. I, I got to be honest with you, Pat. I wouldn't care if you never partook in this statement <laughs> segment again. <laughs> I'd have no problem. I, with I'm that. not sure I ever have, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually wrong. Uh, let's get to our movie this week. We forgot to even announce it at the top. Gerald's Game. We Netflix. did. New to oh, we Netflix. Uh, oh, no, we didn't announce it. Oh, we we did forget. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, Gerald's Game. <laughs> Gerald's Game. Uh, I was real into Stephen King when I was a boy, and my mom pretty much had, had the rule of as long as you're reading, you can read whatever you want, which was a, kind of a good way to get me to read. Mm -hmm. And I loved to read. But then Gerald's Game came along. I remember there were two books. One was American Psycho. My mom like slid it across the table like this is disgusting. Yeah, that's I've never seen one. her do that. 
um, and she would not allow me to read that. And then the other one was Gerald's game. And I was like bummed out because it's Stephen King. I was probably 14. And then I read what it was about. Chaining a it was in the book. She's completely naked, chaining a naked woman to a bed, and then right. the husband dies on top of her, basically. And then the you know dogs and all sorts of things. She's trapped in a room for the whole book, chained to a bed, naked. So I snuck it every every time I I could get a moment with it. I would sneak the book, pleasure myself to it, but also be scared by it. You'd pleasure yourself to the book. I that was at an age where just the sex scene before the death of the husband was enough was enough needful things had a little fantasy paragraph out of that thousand page book there's one paragraph where the kid imagines he's naked writing on the chalkboard and his and, teacher comes up behind him and jerks him off okay and that paragraph kept me going for probably six the months. naked young boy that was all you needed to, to read well it, he was my age no i know so uh, yeah, the teacher would jack him up. Pet Cemetery uh, has a scene where the wife goes in with the oven mitt and jerks him off in the bathtub. Really? And when you're a kid and porn isn't readily available, uh, meaning I had, had no possible way of seeing porn, or really a Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition with my parents, I had to get it where I could. So things like that. There was a Christopher Pike book called Monster where there was a... Uh, hot tub sex scene it was a, a young adult novel so it was probably three sentences right of this couple having sex in a hot tub yeah i jerked off of this thing for a year yeah i remember there's a scene in the movie fall time starring Stephen baldwin and mickey rourke sure where they have like a i guess they have two, i can't remember i haven't seen it in a while but they, they compare dick sizes and you, you jacked off to it <laughs> yes they rob a bank and so there's fall time and then they, he points at his pants yeah they they rob a bank. They they have they think two hostages. One's like a a young woman. Oh no no that's right. They take like a teller hostage, and she's like a hot like girl in her twenties. And then there's like a young kid on the team, and like she seduces the kid and like jerks him, like reaches her hand in his pants and like jerks him off. I used to whack off to that all the time. Yeah, um, crazy and, how how destroyed our imaginations have become over time. Yeah, it's terrible. Like, I could can't. you ha, have you? I I could do it, but how long has it been since you sat down and jerked off with your imagination? It's been a while, and I and I have to really let it back up. I gotta yeah. really just be in a real prison state of right. things, where I'm like I'm gonna explode if I don't do this. Sure, uh, not to well, use that, such colorful language, but that's um, you were big on. Uh, Jerking off at like at a plant at a restaurant or, or something like that. What's that? You, you just you release yourself when you feel it. Much yeah. like uh, Mr. Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> what is the plant that, at that a restaurant? That was the story that came out last night. That, that he, he jerked uh, off at a plant in a restaurant? He was alone with this woman, a woman I have met, and a very lovely woman. Um, and she came out with a story, and it's, as all these stories are, true. Because Harvey Weinstein has been a notorious monster for decades. But he was like, hey, uh, what do you think? We, you know, you want to come back to my room? And she's like, no, they're in a restaurant. Like, people are in the restaurant. Right. She goes, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't, didn't think that's what this is about, et cetera. And he goes, just shut your mouth then. Takes his dick out. Yanks it like six times. Ejaculates into a potted plant. Puts his dick away and goes back into the restaurant. Where is the plant? Outside? In the restaurant. And they're nobody, in like a little nobody vestibule. sees this. They're in the back, like between the bathrooms and the whatever, you know. All right. And I, the, I mean, these stories are just going to keep coming and coming and coming. Uh, for, forgive me with using the word. I honestly did not mean to make the pun. What do you think coming, of coming. his claim that he made that he righted these things as best he could in the past, and now, and they're now paying them off? Yeah, I think it's absurd. I mean, the man's like, look, I came up in the in the '60s. Oh, is that what he's time. saying? That is in, in his apology letter, he's like, I came up in the 60s. Oh, okay. You, you you could jerk off in a plant in front of a woman if you wanted to. Um, but it's not good. And what's troubling to me is that Rose McGowan, and let's look to connect this to horror. Man, Man's produced a lot of horror, the Scream franchise. Uh, She's produced almost every Tarantino movie. Also in the Scream franchise, Rose McGowan. And this is apparently where it started to happen. But Harvey Weinstein raped rose mcgowan she's been talking about it for years 
on Twitter and whenever anyone well, asks she's her, she's accusing him of it. Let's not let's not sentence the man here. I'm not right. saying he's I'm not saying he's not guilty. I'm just saying we we should be careful. Let's not say that it definitely happened because you know I don't think they're suing this podcast, but but I'm just saying due process is a thing that we all need to remember is part of our sure. judicial system. That's all. Sure, that's but you know that's fair. He he did a lot. I'm not saying he didn't. Look, I've Over heard many you know, many decades at the end of uh, at the end of uh, what's it called. Um, uh, overnight, which is my favorite documentary ever. Oh, you know. what, folks! I bet many of you have not seen the documentary Overnight. I own it. You can buy it for ten bucks on Amazon, whatever. I think it's that amazing. might be the only way to see it. It's one of the best documentaries I've ever made. The, uh, it's about the guy who made the Boondock Saints, which is like every frat douche's favorite movie. Well, and the, the guy end, who made it is the ultimate frat douche. Yeah. And at the end of that, he claims that Harvey Weinstein tried to have him killed. Yes. By sending a car to run him off the road. Right. So, I mean, look, I, I, I've never thought Harvey Weinstein seemed like a great guy. Uh, I am not would not be surprised if any or all of this was true. Uh, you ever read down in dirty pictures? About- but, you know, it's it's, you know, I'm also not going to say, well, he's definitely guilty. That's not my place to say it, you know. I, I will. I'll say he's definitely guilty. <laughs> um <laughs> All right. Have you read Down and Dirty Pictures about like the rise of in- the indie movies, mostly dealing with a lot of Merrimax, Harvey Weinstein shit? It's an amazing book. No. It's basically the indie version of like Easy Riders, Raging Bulls. You ever read that book? No. You have to read both of these books. Why? They're two of the best books ever written, in my opinion. In, in terms of nonfiction, certainly nonfiction, entertainment industry related. I don't care. I don't give a shit about that stuff. You don't care about like... How all the seventies directors came to be Scorsese and what do, what do I what do I need to know They made they Altman, they went to film all those school co- coked out movie sets Taxi Driver Yeah I guess I mean I don't know I don't think I would There's amazing stories in both those books I'm sure there are Th- those aren't the things I like to read though I like to read fiction I don't they, like to read nonfiction They did make Easy Riders Raging Bulls into a documentary That I would watch And that's great that Ted I Demi would also made a, a documentary about the seventies directors um, Speaking of books Yeah Gerald's Game Right, that's correct. Uh, uh, Jer- I, let me say this. Can I say this? One of the best Stephen King adaptations I have ever seen. I thought it was a phenomenal film. It it took a seemingly impossible to film book and made a really neat movie out of it. I liked it a lot myself. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, and it's getting n- not none, but about a tenth of the shine that this horseshit fucking it adaptation is getting. You know what? That's probably why I liked it even more. It pro- it cost one one hundredth of it, and it's scarier than it, and it's better than it. Whew. Intense flick. Yeah. Really intense flick. To, to, to the point where there were parts where I was like, I don't know if I need to see that. Well. But that's what made it good. I'm going to do a quick spoiler. Actually, I'm not. But I'll just say the hand scene was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. So and as I, I was telling Heather and Nike, she was asking if she should watch it, and she's a wuss. Um, the only time in my entire life that I've ever audibly screamed at a movie was Audition. The Japanese really? Takashi McKay, when, that, when the bag moves, the pig man in the bag. I screamed. <laughs> it was you know 15 years ago. I yeah. screamed in my house. I woke my roommate up. Uh, and in that hand scene, for what the does first that sound time in, like when you scream at something? It's not, it's not, it's not a masculine scream. <laughs> uh, but I watching that hand scene, and if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you've not, I won't go into any more detail. Holy shit! That was one of the most intense things I've ever seen in my life. There were two scenes where I made it, where I I live alone, as you know, and I just just me and the dog here. Yes. I, I, I made audible gasps at two scenes in the film yeah. uh, to nobody but myself. The yeah. fucking dog doesn't know what I'm doing. He's an idiot. <laughs> uh, audible gasps. It. And uh, I was over here preparing food as I was watching it for both scenes. Uh, the hand scene was one, and then the other, without spoiling anything, the uh, Henry Thomas dad oh, scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I was just like, whew. Shiver me timbers. Uh, 
But the movie's yeah. fantastic. Um, both, really, both I, actors are really, re- really tremendous in it. The the guy that plays the the jewelry man with the moonlight man, that's the guy from Twin Peaks, right? Isn't that the giant from Twin Peaks in makeup? Oh, maybe. I I figured it was somebody with some sort of disfiguration. No, I think it's actually. I think it's just the giant from oh, okay. Twin Peaks. All it right. looks just like him, except yeah, with, that's true. with makeup on. That's crazy true. makeup on. I didn't put. That um, you like I, that ending? Um, kind of stupid. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I apparently when the book came out, that ending was extremely polarizing too, because it's like the last forty pages of the book or something. I didn't think we needed it. I felt like th- when she, well, I, there, look, there's going to be spoilers now because I don't. We can't. You can't talk about this without spoiling anything. I really thought the ending was going to be, and it would have been enough for me, was her stumbling out of that house. And you see her, you know, the last shot is you see her like pulling into the emergency room or something and it fades to black. And it's to me, that was enough of she did it. Right. She overcame the the demons that were literally in her life and emotionally in her life and whatever. That would that was enough of a triumph of the spirit for me or would have been. Yeah. Uh, I didn't need a literal scene at the end where you realize, oh, the Moonlight Man is actually real. Mm-hmm. And then she turns her back on him in the courtroom. And Here's what really bothered me about the end. No fucking courtroom on planet Earth is going to let somebody just waltz in and just right. go through those gates. <laughs> Yeah, and then you know just I mean? no one even says, like, stop. Yeah, nobody says anything. Maybe they did. I don't remember. There's nobody guarding the door. Then the Moonlight Man breaks the handcuffs, and you're like, "What? wait, what? How yeah. can he break the handcuffs? This is a diseased man. He's right. sick. Uh, so like, there were elements of that. It was It's very on the nose for her to turn her back and go, you're much smaller than I remember. Um, yeah, it bloody was disgusting. I'm not trying to shit on bloody disgusting. I do like the website, but... They've been writing some stuff lately that's been driving me fucking crazy. And one of the things was why the last 15 minutes of this movie was so important. And it's literally like an analysis where it's like... You mean when, in, in like today's society? Is that what they're talking just, about? They, not so much that, just like this is why it's necessary. This sure. is why you should love the ending. And it was like the writer was like... Her, when she turns her back, that's literally her turning her back on her past. It's like, yeah, no shit. Right. <laughs> Everybody understands that. Like, nobody's confused by what yeah. it's supposed to mean. Yeah, I really it's, got that. I did. It's, it's just, I felt like it just didn't need to be there. I like the idea that, like, uh, you didn't know whether or not the Moonlight Man was real. I like that she drops her wedding ring into his into his jewelry box at the end. And, and that's kind of where she says goodbye to her past. Like, I didn't need a literal explanation of why that guy was there. Agreed. I th- did think the one one cool detail in there was that the the mutilation of her husband's body was mostly from that guy and not the dog. Right. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but, you know, that being said, it didn't ruin the movie for me or anything. It wasn't like I was like, no. well, fuck this movie. No. Um, I mean, Gugino was great in it. Who? Carla Gugino. She's great. She's really great in the... the, the the, I almost said the dad's name. Uh, the Bruce guy, Greenwood. Bruce Greenwood, who's in uh, everything. I know him best from Star Trek. <clears throat> he portrayed the pres. He always plays the president, but recently he played the president in uh, Kingsman Two, which I discussed last week. He was yeah. The pre- he played the president in Thirteen Days and all kinds of different movies. Got to see that damn Kingsman One and Two still. Uh, so overall, a big thumbs up for me for this flick. I, I really enjoyed it. I agree. I agree with the thumbs up. Um, you know, but not, not a rave and not just because of the ending. It was uh it was a tense kind of involving movie, but it felt a little it felt like the best lifetime movie ever made in a way to me. Look, anything I think anything made for Netflix still has yet to escape the made for TV movie feeling. Sure. Uh, so I, there were times where I was like, yeah, this feels like an awesome mini series. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I'll tell you this, if it ever gets released, I'll buy it. It's one I would have for the collection without a, without, without a doubt, I would put it in the collection. Reminded me a lot of misery. 
uh, and the things I loved about Misery. The suspense was great. Mm -hmm. uh, the simplicity of the story and the, the you know one location and all that was great. Um, and the way the sort of puzzle unfolded about the significance of the glass of water and why nobody could hear her screaming and right. why they were there. It was all very, very well done, you know, I agree. Uh, because the source material was obviously very good. So I loved it. Pat liked it. There you have it. Patty, Joey. Um, what do you, what well, do you Joe, why don't you why don't you tell them about our, our Patreon? Folks. We finally got off our lard asses and got this Patreon up and running. Thank God. Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, it's up. You can go to it. Patreon.com slash W-S-I-Y-H. Those are the initials for We'll See You in Hell, obviously. Pod. P-O-D. W-S-Y-I-H. P-O-D. Uh, go to it. We've got uh, three tiers for donations, there's a dollar tier uh, that's just a kindness donation. If you love the show and just want to maybe th show us your uh, gratitude, of course, th through through money, because that's the only way to show gratitude, in my opinion, uh, you can donate a buck or two. Uh, there's a five dollar tier. If you want to donate five bucks, you will get a shout out on the podcast and that's for every donation their monthly donation so if you donate five bucks every month every month we will give you a shout out uh, every time you do um and last but not least um there's a ten dollar tier and the ten dollar tier will get you a an exclusive mini sode which means you will not get just four episodes in the month you'll get a fifth one for free uh well for ten bucks uh, and every month you donate the ten bucks, you you know the people, those people will get the mini so, uh, plus this plus the shout out I think too. Um, we should probably you should get both, uh, even though it doesn't say that you'll get both. All right, you know. And I, I think it's safe to say the, these mini sods will be roughly the length of an episode of the show. Yeah, and and we'll do something different. Mini is, a mini lot is of it, deceiving. It sounds like it's five minutes long. Yeah, no, a lot of it will be, uh, you know, uh, maybe let, you know what? Uh, we'll go on and change it just to, you'll get an extra episode. You get an extra episode. Uh, and we'll do something different where it's like a top ten. Yeah, we've talked about doing like each, or, each of us say our top five horror movies, five to one, et cetera. Yeah, or maybe we'll even do an interview with a guest or something like that. Yeah, like, but it'll be absolutely. it'll be something different than the regular show. So so that's it. The Patreon's out there. Patreon.com slash W-S-Y-I-H-P-O-D. Uh, you can follow me. Come follow me on Instagram, please. I'm not I'm only posting to Twitter now through my Instagram. It's Joe DeRosa Comedy. Come follow me over there, and uh, this comes out. I'll be in Pittsburgh at the Improv uh, the weekend of October 19th. So if you want to check it out, come uh, check it out. Folks, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Patrick Walsh. You can hear me this Wednesday on uh, Los Feliz, the podcast. I know that's a little niche, and if you're out of the Los Angeles area, it probably won't interest you, but it's with my old friend Morgan Murphy. And my new friend, Robin Shore, and we talk about the neighborhood in which I and you could say Joe and Morgan and those two and a lot of my friends live in Los Feliz. It's a funny podcast about the neighborhood. and It's a very cool thing they're doing, like a little community podcast. I like it. And it's but it's funny. It's good. Um, and the other thing is my show has changed its name back to living biblically. Um it was market tested. They were like, living biblically, we don't like it. We're going to buy the book. Then two days ago, they were like, hey, we tested it again. People prefer living biblically. I said, you do whatever you want as long as it's not some stupid pun. Now, is there any chance in these tests? They, they say, we made a mistake. Joe DeRosa, back in the show. I, I'm going to bring it up at the next one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but the show, which for fans of the podcast, is really going to be a treat because... Not only did I write and create the fucking show, but Joe DeRose says, I've told you many times, steals the fucking show. He's amazing in it. Well, let's not be, if I stole it, I'd still be in the goddamn <laughs> thing. But uh, stole it I'm, from in, I'm in the pilot. He's he, Well, he's awesome in it. And Thank it you. starts, um, I still don't know, but it's looking like January. I just wanted to tell you the name went back. So if you are 
You know, you talk to your parents back home. You want to tell them you listen to a show. You, you, you watch for this television show. The title is Back to Living Biblically. All right, folks, that's our show. We'll see you next time. And we'll see you in hell. That was a HeadGum Podcast.